everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching today's tutorial. This is Fun Fold card number three for this year's Creative Card Series. And um, I'm really pleased with this one, I love it. So it's quite Mixed Up Craft looking um, with the belly band. Um, it's quite a signature look of mine, I think, when I go back through past um, tutorials. Um, so pretty basic from the front. You just slide off your belly band. I'm going to put something on there, I think, when I go to give it to that person. I'm not really sure who this is for yet. I just like to keep them in my stash. So, you've got your belly band, leave that there, and then you open it up, and you have these two, which are obviously, at the moment, they're facing, obviously, not the right way. But when you open each one up, that one goes on that side, and that one goes on that side. And it's a double-twisted easel card. Um, and I really, really love this one. If I can somehow try and hold that and bring it up, that's the profile that you will have. So whoever has that, when that's sat on their mantle or their sideboard, that's how it will look. And I think it looks brilliant. Really, really like this. And if I just bring it up really close there, you can see all the detail. I've used those real life butterflies. And the good thing about these butterflies is because they're plastic, they, they don't, even if they're laid flat in this envelope for a while, they will still go back to a 3D form. Um, you can see there, so yeah, absolutely love this. And then it all folds up, it's got a little spine on the side here just to help with that bulk and not squash all of your work. And then it just finishes off nicely in the belly band. So in terms of writing your message, you've got a few options really. You could put something on the back here, but I am going to do my message probably in here. So when I go through the measurements for these yellow pieces, if you just cut the same in white and then you can put white piece there and you can write your message there or on the other side if you want, it's entirely up to you. You may want to obviously decorate yours very differently, you may put a little envelope in here and have a little card to pull out, I mean there's, you know, in terms of decorating it, the, um, you know, that's endless, you can do so many different things. So, just going to pop this one back here in here and just talk through the papers that I'm using. So I was so excited to get hold of these beautiful um, collection of papers. This is by Paper Mania Do Crafts, and um, yeah, they seem to have done a bit of a turnaround. Like, done really, really. I mean, I've always enjoyed their stuff. They do fantastic dies. I love all their X cut dies, which I use a lot of. Um, but in terms of their papers, recently they've done this Moroccan suite um, and they've done this one here. So it's just this whole collection, and it is brilliant. This is so good. And you also get um, paper flowers, which I'm going to show. You get these bows, and there's there's embellishments as well. So I couldn't get everything because some of it had sold out, but I'm still going to try and order some. But just to talk you through, because I'm going to be using these in future tutorials, you get these beautiful stamps. So they're going to make some really nice cards. This is just a sticker pack, but I like to mount these onto card um, and maybe die cut like a slightly bigger circle and, and use them that way to make tags. Um, this here is probably my favourite out of everything, and this is the um, A4 Ultimate Die Cut and Paper Pack, 48 pieces. Now I purchased all of this in the range, um, and I'll share all the links to it all, but basically, I mean 48 pages, you've got tons and tons here, but it's the vellum, the vellum sold it to me. Um, here you get these beautiful um, uh, tags, they're already pre-cut um, there, but look at this vellum. I'm not going to go through the whole pack, but it is absolutely gorgeous, and I've used some of that in the next one. I've used this one here. If I turn it over, because it's the, the right side, it's just absolutely stunning. And I do love flowers and the nature and, and all those kind of themed papers. They, they always kind of pull me in. Um, but you have pages of stickers. You've got trims there. You've got bows, and that's one of the bows there. It just needs an, um, an embellishment, but again, that's those more papers but there's it's just cutaways mainly and there's tons and tons of them boxes with the tags so if you need any quick projects um, different shaped little boxes so these are going to come in very handy little bunting um, note cards so I'm going to plan on doing an album with this one loads of you have been asking me to do an album I have made many albums over the years and um, I, yeah, I think I'm going to share one, so watch this space because it's going to be made using these papers. So that's that huge 48 page one. 
and quickly just go through the other bits and then we can get into the video. That is another decoupage pack, so you layer all these up, but they're absolutely stunning. They're just beautiful, all different ones in there. And then the 12 by 12 papers, which I love. Um, and that was one of the 12 by 12 was this beautiful print here, um, which I cut down. And then the one I'm using today is gonna be this one here. So um, yeah, again, just absolutely love, love, love it. So if I bring in everything for today's tutorial, so I'm going for purples. It's got a bit of a hunky-dory feel about it now because I've already done a lot of the bits, but because I put the silver there, that looks like those cutaways and the, the decoupage um, stackables that you get with your hunky-dory kits. So it has got a little yeah hunky-dory element to it today, I guess. Um, I've showed you those already. So the main base of this card is using a whole sheet of 12 by 12. And I'll go through all those little bits and pieces in a minute. Let's just get straight into the scoring. So you've got your piece of 12 by 12. Okay, and you are going to score, because we're creating that spine, you want to score at, put it on the right side, there we go, it must have been that way, there we go. So you want to put it um, in and score at five and seven eighths of an inch, and then six and one eighth of an inch. Okay, so on your scoreboard you've got the six inches in the middle, you just want to score one down to the left, and one up to the right, and that will give you that small quarter inch little spine there, okay? Then rotate your card round and just score one at six all the way down, okay? Then you need to do some scoring with your ruler, and basically what you want to do is, with the two score lines, so the one with the spine, you want that facing um, vertically, and then you've got your single line here horizontally. You want to then score, you've got these two big squares, you're going to score from the middle out to the outside. Now when I say the middle, you can see here, you don't want to go into this spine, just to the corner there and the corner there. And you're just going to go out right to the very edge. Okay, so do that one first. I'm just going to go over mine again, like so and like so. Okay, so again, if I just catch that in the light, you can see it kind of is starting to look like a Union Jack flag we've got coming on there. All right, so that's what you want to do. Then we need to do some burnishing, and it you need to, whenever you make an easel card, um, make sure you burnish your lines, because you need it to, to fold perfectly. If you don't, and it's still got that kind of springy um, look to it, it just won't work very well, it'll keep popping out of its little um, stopper. So what you want to do is just go and burnish all of those lines apart from this one for the minute. You can't do that yet until we do a little bit of cutting. So and just take extra care with that small Find that, make it all nice and even. Okay, so what we're going to do now is where you've got your diagonal score lines here, this middle section, that bit of that spine, right down to here, we're going to actually remove the whole piece. So just flip this around and I'll cut it first, just so you can see what I'm doing. Right, and you want to remove all of the score lines, so remove all of that bulkiness. because this is all going to be shown and it's actually going to be the side of that twisted easel piece. So You might find at the very bottom piece, if you haven't got scissors, I mean I'll probably use my snips in a second, but if not use a cutting knife just to get a nice neat line. So just find my knife here. So just with that last little piece there, I'm just going to use my ruler, just remove that bit, like so, okay, so that is what you should have now, so you've got the two diagonal score lines, your spine, and then that just that simple, simple, that just that singular six inch score line. Then what we can do is flip it all over, because this is now going to be the inside, because that's going to be the closure and that's the side spine of your card. These pieces here, now you want to fold over along that score line. 
just do it very carefully. If you find it's not going first time round, go back and rescore it. And then now it won't line up, it will line up, but it'll be slightly off because it's not a um, an equal sided square anymore. So don't try and line up all of this. You can see that it goes over, let it just let it go. As long as you've done that score line from point to point, follow that score line. Don't worry about how any of this looks because it doesn't matter when it comes up because that's the the position it's going to make so it doesn't it doesn't matter at all so again put this one here so you can see I'm just slightly coming off there and that's completely normal so so now we've got this kind of big collar and then when you bring that up it will go like so but at the minute obviously it's really bouncy it's got nothing to it but if you bring down this one and burnish these score lines again that will just help so remember what I said about making sure those lines are burnished and now it wants to stay this side it wants to fall this way and that's what you want and then once we've got our stoppers in place which are going to be about there you can see it takes a nice shape okay so you want to make sure that these are really burnished really well and your score lines here so that's all of that done for the minute then you can do your all your kind of mats and layers, I guess, depending on how much you are going to layer it up. So these are the ones for the bottom. You can see here just how gorgeous those prints are. It's just that illustration is absolutely stunning. These ones here are going to go in the bottom of my card. Again, it's not an equal square, so I've cut it so that you still get a nice border. And these ones come in at... Um, so it's five and one, two, three, yeah, five and five eighths of an inch, I believe, by five and three quarters. Yeah, by five and three quarters. So five and five eighths by five and three quarters, and you need two of those. And they're going to go, like I said, in the bottom there. The card I'm using is the Ducross Colossal Paper Pack. I always get this one asked to me. I'll put it in my, the tools I love because I don't think I have, and it's this one here and you get 75 sheets and I've, I'm on my third or fourth pack now and I don't think I'm ever going to get anything different because I love it. It's such a good card. Um, doesn't crack, it comes in a variety of tones so it's really good and easy to match up with your papers. Um, like you can see here, you'd think that this came with the set but it doesn't, it just matches really nicely. Um, and then again that one there so just move it to make sure you got it in the right orientation because you will if you put it with the five and three quarters along the five and five eighths you'll see there you don't get equal sides so just make sure that you have it the right way so those two are going to be like that and then this is the greeny color which is going to form the triangle pieces on the top and these this is an equal square so this is five and a quarter squared Okay, and then all you want to do with this one is turn it over so you don't obviously ruin your print. And with a ruler, you just want to, uh, I mean, if you've got a print, I guess, or something, just bear in mind how you want that to sit and what orientation you want it to sit in. Because this is just a simple generic print, so it doesn't matter which way I have it, but I've cut it along there, so I'm going to cut down there, and then one of them will go like so. And that's going to be what is shown. So if you've got something that's got a print and it's got a direction, then make sure that you obviously work that out and cut it in the right direction. So do that on both pieces, cut them in half, and then you just want to stick them all down. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll be back with it all in place. Okay, so there's my triangle stuck down. You can see there I get a nice even border. And then when they come up, it reveals that beautiful print. So now to do the kind of the toppers and all the, the nice decorations. So part of that um, kit, that suite, the, uh, the collection that Do Crafts have done, you get these freshly cut flowers, you get 32 pieces. So across the card that I've done in this one, I'm only down now to the large ones, but I've used two on each of the flowers. And you can see they're just kind of... Um, into you know not interlock them what's the word overlap them so that you get um, you reveal a little bit of underneath and then I've just put the little pearl in the middle of that one and then the smaller sizes I've got a little faceted gem there and then the tiny one so I've just done three um, and again they all match all the colours um, sit together and they are going to sit like so and that creates your stopper come down a bit there 
that's your stopper okay now if you don't have flowers and you're putting a sentiment there you want to make sure you put it on foam um, because you need that height to create the stopper or at least you'll need to layer up that card a few times um, just so that this doesn't then move and you, so you can have it as far back as far forward as you want it's entirely up to you but I kind of like it there because I like to be able to see you know your papers and then we're going to stick them there and then again the same on the other side so that's where they're going to go and then with your these pieces here so I've used my um, where did I put them from the under here oh yeah here we go I think these are an old, this one here is an old Tonic Studios um, oval nest um, of dyes um, and I've used, I, I've lost one there and that was probably my most favourite one and I've lost it, it's been gone a while now. But anyway I've just selected those, it's entirely up to you, you might want to do square shape, you don't have to do oval, you could do circles, but that is going to sit, if I bring it around like so. So this on its own is just a Twisted Diesel card, just that piece, that look. Um, so, and I've done them before and I've got pictures of those on my Facebook page so again if I remember I'll share them on my blog but that's going to sit in the middle of this triangle here and then the rest of it's going to overhang so now when it comes down when it folds flat it ends up facing this way so that's what I mean when you open it up I mean, it doesn't really matter with this print because, you know, obviously it's it's a flower, so it doesn't really matter. But if you've got a sentiment on here, like with this one here, when that's flat, obviously it's that way. But don't worry, and if anything, that will help the person that receives it because they'll be like, oh, why is it facing that way? And then when they lift it, it's naturally going to do this, and they will work it out. Um, you know, it's not it's not hard for them to do, so I'm, I'm sure they will work it out, and then it ends up facing the right way. Okay, so... What you want to do is when you stick this down is stick it down with this flat okay like so and then grab your glue and sorry if you can hear a light banging in the background someone outside has decided to start banging but that's what you get for living in the city so there you go you can hear it now on this left hand side here anything below this score line is where I want to add my glue so I'm just going to flip it over put my fingers roughly in place and you don't have to go right up, I'm just, you can see that, I'm just going to put enough just to hold it in place. And then again, pop that back down. And make sure you've got equal distances here, here, here and here. Just let that set for a moment. So, and now when that comes up, you'll see it's nice and straight for the person looking at it. And then once those flowers are there, it will stay in that position. So you want to repeat that with your other one. So I'm going to have that one that's going to go there. Okay. And then I'll talk through the belly band and the butterflies and all that kind of stuff. So get your flowers and your topper bits all in place. Okay, so I've got everything stuck down there. When you go to put your, you know, your easel part in place, just make sure you've got an even side there and on this side, these two. And then you'll know that you've got them in the same position. Um, and yeah so there's everything all in place there I absolutely adore these also this was the vellum and as you can see it's just really vibrant against the white card because I've die cut the Miri card in silver white card and then the vellum so that's the three die cuts layered on top there and it's just I love it really really like that so then I've got these butterflies which I have used in my curved um, pop box that I done um, and I wasn't sure which ones I wanted to use you can see how I've used them on these pieces here um, and I, again I just really like them because they stay 3D they do not flatten so I'm certainly going to be getting more and more of these but I think I'm going to have that one there I think she looks really nice um, when you're using these um, I removed you get like a holographic um, base to them which is the sticker I actually didn't really like that so I have removed it just so I just have this singular um, piece and so therefore you need to put a little sticker on the back but the red tape's the best for that because you're obviously sticking it to plastic um, and then I'm just going to stick that one like so so then I've got room for my sentiment to go here I'm not sure what I want to use this one for yet it could be a wedding card um, that one is a birthday card because I've left the sentiments on that one this one could be a get well soon card so I'm, I'm leaving it blank there we go 
Um, so if I just bring that up, because that's the card actually done, all we need to do now is the belly band. But if I bring that, so it's hard because it's going to pop out. Obviously, once this is on a flat surface, it does stay up. But you can see there with that butterfly and the flowers. So once there's a message sentiment going across the middle there, and again, something else on there. Um, yeah, I think it's absolutely gorgeous, and then it folds flat like so. So now, do all of this first before you do your belly band. Always do your belly bands last. Um, and then fold it in half, and then what I've done is using those same um, oval dies is I've done another three. So again, in the same sequence, the silver mirror card, the white card, and the vellum, and I've used the little purple plastic butterfly there. Um, and then what you want to do is grab your. Why did I use my? So this is the other part of that 12 by 12 paper that I cut these pieces from. So what you want to do is, I've done a two inch um, belly band. It was two inches wide. Um, so I'm going to make sure I get a nice bit of this pattern. Because um, that's going to be on the back, so it'll be nice for whoever turns it over and has a little look. So two inches by 12, and that will wrap around you don't have to do two, you might want to do, you know, one, one and a half, half an inch, it's entirely up to you, but I just found two was just really nice. So then what you want to do is lie it on the back, put your card as central as you can, and then bring it up around the card. Keep it loose, you know, loose enough, but you want it to obviously stay in place, like so, and then that is going to cover like so. Okay, so what I want to do now is add some glue, which is just on its way out. Splodge, splodge. Cover that over and just hold that in place for a minute. Make sure it's nice and even. Okay, and then while it's still a little bit tacky, take it off. And then you can just make sure that it's all stuck down. And then where you've kind of created the spine, where you've loosely folded it, you can then just burnish those better and then just slide it down the other way like so and just fold that in so then you know it's all just go back that way like so. so now you've got a nice just bring it back into shape you've got a nice belly band there so now that should without squashing it just hold it all in place now these cards they don't have an envelope this is it it's kind of you know the belly band seals it and that's how it's given these ones generally I would give in by hand to whoever I'm giving them to um, or they would be posted and I've just put them in a protective envelope um, but of course you can make bigger envelopes if you want. It's a 6x6 six six card would be the best one to use, although it isn't obviously equal, um, it's just shy of that. Um, but you can on the envelope punch board you can make those kind of things anyway. So, But there you have it. So that's that one closed up. I'll bring this one back over all open. And there you have it. I hope you agree. They are absolutely gorgeous. And like I said, this series of cards are those wow, those special cards, ones that take a bit more of your time to do. Um, and yeah, I just love this. This would be great for a monumental birthday. You know, 60, 70, 80 on the front of that belly band would look really nice as well. So hopefully I've given you lots of inspiration there. Do give them a go. Do share them on my Facebook page. I always love to see them and I do try and answer um, to your comments or like them um, but I do see them all so thank you once again hope you've enjoyed today please give me a thumbs up if you have and subscribe to my channel to see more thanks for watching bye